Hello from hello from a wonky slant. So Kevin Bonavassa recently got in contact about a calculator that he uh, quite a while back found uh, whilst uh, on vacation in Sweden in an antique shop, and it, it was it was this. It is a I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Facet. Fuck it. <laughs> I don't know whether we can say that. I don't know whether it, I'm pretty sure it isn't the other one, which is fuck it. So I'm pretty sure that's not the term, but I could be wrong. It is the Facet Fagid uh, 1128, and it is uh, quite a snazzy uh, calculator to say the least. In fact, whilst I'm doing this, I'm gonna I'm gonna straighten this up. There's nothing. I'm sure I'm driving somebody absolutely bonkers with that camera angle. So um, he also uh, found this and was kind enough to send a laminated version of the printout. It is all in German, but this basically talks about the, uh, the machine and um, yeah, and all of the functions that it has. If you want to have a read, there are links to this below. He included a link for this and then also the one for the equivalent. And this is the same calculator right here, just a different brand, Sharp, uh, Compet 12. Uh, this is a Japanese little uh, instruction manual. The link for this is also below as well. So yeah, Kevin was kind enough to send this over when he saw that I had been making a bit of a collection of, uh, well, yeah, obscure displays uh, in a display case. That, and this has got a very obscure display set to say the least. So first off, let's turn it on and have a look at the display, shall we? Because it is really, really quite interesting. If I can get that, that connector in. Okay, we're turning it on. Ooh, very strange indeed. So if you have a look at the screen, the screen right here, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different to normal uh, VFD kind of things. Um, if you look at this, you can see it's actually, well, that's a six, that's a nine. How interesting, that's a four. Wow, so it's definitely a different way of writing numbers. And in fact, I remember seeing um, this VFD display being talked about in a Practical Electronics Magazine uh, article, and well, I'll go and dish that out in a little moment. It seems to be in a crossover period. Oh, it actually looks really nice. The numbers one, two, three, and four look really nice. If you look at that, there's some, and the, the strangest one is zero is so small. You would have thought that maybe they would have put some around the outside, but that would have made it a lot more complicated. But the numbers actually somewhat look a little bit, a little bit more number-like, except for the six. The six is extremely odd, very odd indeed. Also, if you look closely, I don't know whether this is going to turn up, but there is actually a mesh on the front of the screen. But this uh, specific uh, tube is a little bit of a rare, weird one. It's uh, this is how it's pronounced. The company. Eisden Ultron DG10. So in March of 1972, it touches on a little bit more information about uh, this style of um, alpha numeric, well actually only a numeric display. Uh, we'll have a look and find out for more details if we can find the bleeding page. So there's a series in here about alphanumeric displays. This uh, specific uh, uh, issue is falling to pieces. Touches on a lot of different uh, displays of the time. Uh, it says on the, for instance, on this image, it says number one, six figure, seven segment LED display, Ferranti. Number two, seven segment LED display, Litronics. Uh, number three, which one's that? Seven segment filament indicator, Minitron. Those are the, the beasts. Cold cathode, neon filled numeric Indicator, Mollard, and that's number four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cold cathode neo neon filled character indicator, that's number five. Uh, number six is cold cathode neon filled character indicator. Ah, uh, that's a nice one. And number seven is a luminescent filament indicator, Astron. Altron. Looks a little bit like um, 
a Numatron kind of style thing. Anyway, it gets onto this point, and you would recognize these. And what are they? Uh, well, let's have a read of what it says about these specific type of, of displays. To overcome readability problems of the basic seven segment indicator, a version using a different bar format has been developed. And this type is shown in figure 1.3, which is up here. To achieve this, some of the versatility of the simple version is lost. And some may consider the numerals a bit wonky, but in use, this version gives a very easy to read display whilst retaining the simplicity of the parallel bar type decoding being sent of the same nature. It's just touching on this, which is the same. If you notice, if you look there, that's the same thing. And okay, yeah, number six is pretty damn wonky, but apart from that, it's quite a nice and readable display. I'm not sure whether it's more readable, but if you look from afar, if you squint your eyes, you can actually decipher the numbers quite well. So maybe, maybe there is some rhyme to the reason. And it's just an interesting idea that this even exists this kind of thing. Uh, the other interesting thing is there's no addition on here. How to add how to add things together is you press equal, like in sort of a comptometer. So you keep on adding it like this, and you press equals, which completely negates the need for an addition button, which is it's pretty cool. This knob right here is for adding decimals. Uh, so now we're over here. We've already moved it, and that's added uh, six decimals on it. So as you can see, for the time, this calculator is pretty cool. Not being somebody who's really up on calculators, more interested in the actual displays and stuff. I mean, it's it's cool. It does this thing. However, I have been told by Kevin there are a few more mysteries within. So let's uh, let's delve a little deeper. So when Kevin uh, found this, he took it apart and he gave it a good clean and stuff and it has been sitting about for a few years apparently, but when he did initially take it apart, oh, I think I'm taking the wrong screws out. I'm gonna put this one back in because I think this is gonna drop the circuit board from inside. So, oh yeah, it does go this way. Okay, interesting. Oh, so something has fallen off. Ah, ah, so something's al something already fell off. Uh, so this is supposed to be, uh, this was just dangling around, and I'm guessing this goes underneath the actual, uh, the netting. If you see, I mentioned the netting. There is actually some really fine netting mesh there. So this seems to go underneath that as well, which is quite cool. I'm not gonna allude to know uh, particularly uh, what the logic is, but you can see there is a lot of, there's a lot of logic going on there, Mitsubishi. They are mainly Mitsubishi uh, logic chips, however, you notice. Uh, there's a big chunky one right here. I'm not gonna be kind of delving deep into this one uh, because it, it works, it works really well and I, I don't wanna pull it apart basically, but we're gonna buy from the front. These are really nice connectors as well. It actually looks like it'll be quite easy to take apart, but sometimes it's just better just to leave it until something's broken. So yeah, as you can see the tubes, they've got actually a very thin heater filament on the front. And now having turned them on, you can see they're pretty much very similar to other VFD tubes, however, They've just a really odd shape. There's a custom one right here to uh, tell you that it's a minus number and this and that and the other, which is pretty cool. On the back, you'll see there's just the power supply um, stuff chilling out. It's a very nice looking machine and this specific one is very clean. I know Kevin did a bit of cleaning on it, so I'm not sure the exact condition of what it was like. However, I'm remembering mentioning about the uh, actual um, buttons here, which I'm, I am not gonna take off, but they are actually um, magnetic. They work over a reed switch. Oh my God. If I kind of wave these over the top of it, you'll see that I'm actually able to type things in roughly, very roughly. Maybe I've got the polarity the wrong way around. I can type things in with, the, with a magnet on the back of this uh, this item, which is basically the buttons are just magnets uh, that push closer to a reed switch. And then you'll see right here, there's um, they've got little um, little springs and stuff. How cool is that? Having just removed the key assembly from the front, just out of pure curiosity, uh, well, you can see it actually sits sort of nicely, reasonably nicely on top, not 100%, but I wonder, maybe, if there's a way of vacuum, getting a vacuum form mold, potentially, I mean, it might be a bit of a faff, but that might be possible. That might be possible, maybe. However, there is another idea that I've just had and I'm quite keen on it and I'm actually gonna turn this off first before I talk about it. But the idea of actually having, uh, you know, an, easily to an easy to find acrylic enclosure, I think this is definitely more possible. It's basically getting an acrylic box around it and then having this, um, 
bolted to the front of it. So using the uh, mounting screw holes that are actually intended for mounting it to the front, but actually mounting it like this. This means it is not modified. It can be put together normally like usual, but then also if you look around, you can actually see the rest of the functioning of the, uh, of the calculator. That could be cool. So I just need to get hold of a big square acrylic enclosure. But until then, I'm gonna put this back together and it will be just being able to be used, I think right now is the best thing because it's in such a nice condition. It would be a shame not for people to at least push a few buttons, come on. I'm gonna put this screen back onto it right now, even though it does cover up the tubes a little bit. But uh, yeah, the plan will be, there's a number of options. Uh, going for the really complicated option that possibly may never happen is actually trying to figure out how to make a clear top for it. Either that, or putting it into a clear enclosure box and then the, uh, the buttons are actually completely isolated from it and it's right here or it could be um, wired up in an autonomous kind of fashion and put on display much like this. So it's sat up like um, this is sat up here and it's done this and then it's doing the numbers, doing something autonomously. I haven't quite decided yet, but also up for ideas and stuff. But right now, because this item is extremely robust, it would seem, it is really quite a heavy duty machine and it's uh, not brittle. None of, the, none of the plastic feels like it's going to be giving anytime soon. The buttons are extremely hard wearing due to the mechanism that I just spoke about. Like this is good enough, I think, to be set up on a desk. It'll be not, not modified, but it will be bolted down to a desk for this weekend for people to use and have a look at the uh, the in really interesting display because it's just really quite interesting. And then later on, we can figure out whether to take it to the next step. Um, obviously, it's about trying to do something like this without modifying it. So all of the modifications and the adjustments are gonna be completely reversible. It's just whether it's possible. So yes, thank you very much, Kevin. This is really, really good and I'll make sure it gets displayed with the other displays because it's just really, <laughs> It's a really nice example of a very, very obscure um, numeric display design. You may notice that there has been a name change to the museum. It's happened now, it's all good and stuff like that, but you know, everything else is the same, except for the name. <laughs> anyway, that is it for now. If you wanna support these kind of videos and stuff like that, as well as the museum, which is open this week, so you can come and play on this on Sunday. Well, go and check it out on Patreon or YouTube membership and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I'm Sam. Uh, this is the Facet, uh, maybe the Facet, I'm really not sure. 11.28 and yeah, uh, have a lovely time.